Hi, welcome. My name is Caroline and this is my Stitch Corner, a channel all about cross-stitch, sewing, knitting and other crafty things I get up to. And yeah, as you have already seen in the title of this video, it's finally time for my end of year whip parade. I am really, really excited to film this. I love watching whip parades and I also really like the idea of making one, going through all my whips and making plans for um, next year. So a little bit of information beforehand. I am filming this whip parade right now and my plan is to film a finish parade and um, plans for 2024 right after this. But I cannot find my finished pieces. <laughs> they are stuck in my wardrobe there somewhere. I will have to dig around for them after this, but if I don't find them, it will only be a plans video next <laughs> after this one. Um, but yeah, we will see. So how I am going to do this uh, whip parade. It is probably going to be long as all my videos tend to be, but I have um, some structure in place. So <laughs> first up, I have a beautiful painting over there covering my not so pretty monitor. This is a painting my grandmother made and um, yeah, I love it because it has beautiful colors. It's, it's not as um, boring as my monitor is, but it's also not too busy to be distracting in the background, I think. And in front of there, you can already see the first pile of my whips. So I have 30 whips that I will take into the new year. I have a new start plan for the first, but none uh, for this year anymore. So it's 30 whips. And I will film um, this video in chunks of six whips so that I can prepare them like this, but put them onto boards and then get them tucked away again until I um, uh, start the next six because otherwise it would be other chaos um, <laughs> in my room. So I am not bothered at all with having 30 whips. There can be more, I don't care. But how do people film whip parades with like a hundred uh, projects? I, I have no idea. <laughs> So I have not ironed any of those, but uh, I don't think they are too wrinkly. I tend to fold them really nice uh, before I put them into my project bags. I will show you all my project bags um, that I have ma made or that are nice ones, not, ju not the just plasticky ones. And I know that a lot of people out there uh, really like to see project bags. I am specifically talking to you, Emma, from You Kid Me Needleminder. Um, yeah, I will show you all my whips in chronological order. So starting with the oldest and uh, at the end there will, will be my newest from December. So if you have watched all my Stitchy Advent videos and don't want to see all those whips again, uh, I will tell you when they are going to start. Other than that, if you are new here, <laughs> maybe let's let's um, yeah quickly um, recap because I know that whip parades attract a lot of new people. If you're new, first welcome to my channel. I hope you like what you see and that you consider sticking around. I started cross stitching this year in April, and I have been uh, quickly discovering floss tube and been down that rabbit hole and yeah not gone up that hole since and I feel really comfy in that rabbit hole so I don't mind I love the community and yeah I love all my whips I guess too the ones that I don't love or didn't love I um, have abandoned or I have some UFOs right here in front of me that I quickly want to show you up front. 
there are not too many there are a few almost all of them no all of them i started really early on before i knew what i liked considering fabric floss patterns and so on and i'm sure my taste and stuff will change as i go along but for the first few months those are those that i won't be continuing so yeah i think that's it for an introduction if you have any questions or if you want to know anything please just write me a comment um, or a dm on instagram or you an email i would love to hear from you but enough rambling let's get on to my projects as I said, I want to start with my UFOs to get that out of the way before we start onto my active whips. The first thing UFO is this one and it looks so nice in the camera and also looks really nice in, in person. This is a temperature chart from Stitching Mommy on Etsy and the chart is, is, is great. There's nothing wrong with the chart. There is one butterfly for each month and as you can see I have six butterflies and I have January um, filled in. The, there's two problems that I have with this. First and the, I think that's the biggest one why I didn't continue is the fabric. This is, I don't even know the count, but it's, it's a fabric with really really big holes. I don't know if you can see that and it it, I really hate stitching on this and I, I just didn't want to pick it up. I couldn't decide if I would be doing one strand or two strands and uh, yeah, I just couldn't be bothered to go on with this. I started this sometime in late May, so I would have had to catch up a lot with this temperature chart and also it's too fiddly, it's too complicated for a temperature chart for me personally. So I want to do a tem temperature chart next year as well, but it will be one that's not as fiddly as doing all those butterflies. The amount of miscounts I have in, those, in this piece because of that fiddly nature and that horrible, for me, fabric. Yeah. Um, this will not be continued. I will probably just cut out that butterfly and use it for something. Um, yeah, it, it's a pity, but it is what it is. Next up is this one <laughs> that you cannot really tell um, much with right now. This was supposed to be a sewing machine or a vintage sewing machine. So that's the, the arch of the sewing machine there. This is a pattern by Mommy's Hobbies Design on Etsy. It's again a really nice pattern, nothing wrong with that pattern. I love the, the creator of this. I have another of her charts that I really like to stitch. The problem with this again was the fabric. This is a 25 count even weave from Swigert in Vintage Dune. And when I started this, I had no idea. Um, on how I wanted to do like full coverage pieces. And so I did this one over one full cross, or I started this, Anna. I am doing another full coverage uh, on 28 count, two over one 10 stitch, and this is the way I will go in the future. I will probably try again on this fabric with another pattern once I have my CXC threads with two over one 10 stitch because they are supposedly a little bit thicker and so I might be happier with the coverage than on with the DMC. Next up with my UFOs is this one. I already cut it and uh, the rest of the fabric is in my stash again. This is this year's Stitch Along from All, All Forest Embroidery. The Treasure Island um, stitch along and when I start when this started in May I was super excited I was super new to cross stitch and there are a few things I don't like about this I will show you just this piece first this 
This is way too big of a count. This is a 27 count Linda in vintage country mocha. And I will use the rest, but not for a chart this big. I don't even know where I would have put this. If I did this again, I would use like a 40 count. But the second thing I don't like about this, this was charted in for the old forest embroidery variegated threads that I cannot get where I am. And so I use the DMC conversion, but it's just too flat for me. I don't like it that much. And also I don't like stitching people, at least not this kind. Of, they're too big for my liking. They would have either, either to be much smaller or much bigger for me to like them. And there are like 10 of them on there. So when I saw that there would be more and more and more people on this, I decided to stop and um, now the whole thing is out. It's nice, but it's not my style. If you like it, it's a freebie on their website, so you can get it, but it's just not for me. And then the last UFO I have, and this is a shame because I was determined to continue with this, is Women in a Field of Flowers by Stitches So Beautiful, artwork by Ada Rosa. I started this uh, the beginning of June when this went all over uh, um, Instagram with cross stitchers. And this is uh, my progress on this. This is something over 2%. As you can already see, and this is one of the main things, that fabric, <laughs> it's a really cheap, no name, 16 count Ada that is not very nice to stitch with and hard to wrangle, I would have persevered. But when I was stitching on this sometime in summer, I noticed a mistake in the pattern. So the pattern keeper wasn't picking up some symbols correctly. So I talked to the, um, um, to the designer um, of that pattern and she was really helpful and um, changed that around, changed all the symbols and um, yeah, sent me the corrected pattern. So, okay, fine. When I picked that one up again, I had to remark everything in Pattern Keeper that I had and I had to um, redo my floss drops that I had made uh, with the symbols because the symbols that correspond with the colors had changed and there are like 90 colors in this So, okay, I was still determined to um, Continue with this but then some weeks ago I got an email from the designer again saying that there have been duplicate symbols in pattern keeper with a lot of her patterns and she's slowly going through them and um, updating them and correcting them. Fine, it can happen, no problem, but you've already corrected it once, why not check on that um, then? And I opened the file and it's again completely different symbols, so the third time. And no, I am not going to remark this for the third time in Pattern Keeper, redo my floss strips for the third time. No, thank you. I'm done now. <laughs> Maybe I will restart that sometime in the future. I still like the chart, but for now, I don't want to see it. <laughs> yeah, so that have been my UFOs. Um, I... Um mostly sad about the last one, the other ones, yeah, I don't, don't mind that much. And let's now go on to active whips and more positive uh, progress. So the way I keep track of all my whips is in Notion. I have bought the template by Stitchinati, which I still really, really love and enjoy and I can only re recommend. I have um, down there is my laptop with the project cards uh, put up where I can see uh, all the information I need for my projects. So let's get started. My oldest whip ugh, is at the moment living in this bag that I made. 
Um, yeah, that vinyl front back. There are only a few threads left in there. The project in there is called Albatrosses by Cute Patterns by Maria. I started this May 25th, um, 2023, and I am like 99.7% done. Here it is. Ah, it's super, super cute. So I am finished with all of the cross stitch um, portion on this and I only have back stitch and French knots left. I started the back stitch down here and then did a little bit in here and the back stitch adds so much detail to this. I cannot wait how this looks when it's done but the back stitch is also really really tedious to do so that's why this isn't done yet but it will be in the next year for sure this is on a 32 count blue splash even with by Swigart it's Murano so it has those little blue dots that are super cute there will be um, a line going around um, there and a little bit of backstitch and French knots over there I am still debating if I will be doing the French knots or if I will do beads instead, which could be really cute. So, yeah, this will be my 12 by 12 today and tomorrow as well, so it will get a little bit more backstitch then. <laughs> okay, next up, this one is called Hannah Mandala by Ink Circles. And I started this June 15th and I haven't stitched on it since then. <laughs> oh, I don't even know the way, what the way up is. I think like that. I think that's the corner. <laughs> oh my, oh my. Um, I just haven't gotten around to this, I guess. This is stitched on a 32 count mystery I don't know the name, it's a beige linen from Swigert. As I said, it's a 32 count. And I am doing this with a variegated DMC. No, I don't have the color. It's 4130, the orangey, orangey color. Yeah, I still really, really like this. I just haven't gotten around to this. This will also be in my 12 by 12. Oh, and um, I always forget to mention how many strands I'm doing. So up to 36 count, all I'm doing is two over two. Um, and from 40, 40 count and 46 count, I'm doing one over two. Um, full coverage is a little bit of a different story. I will um, mention that when I get to that, but for all my regular stitching, that's what I'm doing. Next start, we're already into August. <laughs> August 1st, I started Summer Quaker by Lila Studio. I have been seeing this on Samantha's channel, uh, the Higa Stitcher. And I knew that I wanted to stitch along with her. It's the Live in the Sunshine Cell that uh, she's hosting. And I love it so much. I will also be doing the Spring Quaker and the Autumn Quaker that she has next year. Or starting those. So my Summer Quaker is... Has this much progress. So not too much, but also not, not nothing. This is stitched on a 35 count natural linen by Zweigart with all the called for DMC. It is beautiful. As I said, it is two over two as well. I tried one over two, but I like the denser coverage and that it's more colorful and vibrant like that. So yeah, I will be doing this in 12 by 12 as well, but it will probably then uh, only get back out when it, uh, it's nearer to summer, but I love it. I love a Quaker. I love 
um, the layout layout of this and how it's how it's charted. Very very pretty, and I love that it's that it's pattern keeper compatible, which is always a bonus in my point, in my book, in my book. I think it's the right way to say this. Oh, and I am just over ten percent on this one. Next up is a huge, huge project. It lives in one of my favorite project bags that I made. It is in that project bag. This is an English paper piecing panel that I made like more than 10 years ago and turned into this project bag. And there you can already glimpse the project. It's Fruits of Plenty by Modern Folk Embroidery. Such a gorgeous chart. Really, really beautiful. And I started this August 22nd, 2023. And this is where I am. Okay, just I have just have some line going there so you don't need to see that I guess. It's easier to show that way. So I'm doing this with two uh, greens from Anchor. I think 844 and 1044. I'm not if you want to know please let me know. This is stitched on a 32 count even weave by Swigert, but it's like in a, or is it even weaves? I don't even know. Now that I look at it, it might be a linen. I think it's called Lucan. I'm not sure. But um, I really love the combination of the fabric and the floss. And I am over 11% done with this. So I took this on a vacation in September and really got a good chunk done, but it's huge. <laughs> so, um, yeah, still a ways to go. I have the 20 here, but who knows what <laughs> what year uh, will be down there. 24, probably not. 25, maybe. So I'm also doing next year's um, Stitch, stitch along from Modern Folk Embroidery and I'm doing it on the same fabric but with different colors so that those two can be companion pieces in my living room. Yeah, just go a little bit closer but because it's pretty very very nice and this will also be in my 12 by 12 So all of those will get a little more progress this year but yeah, just I only have time to film basically right now. Next up is my birthday start from this year. And it's a very special one because it is a Chatelaine. It is a little Tuscany mandala by Chatelaine. So yeah, I'm crazy enough to start a Chatelaine like four months into my stitching journey. <laughs> but I didn't start with a huge one. I started with a small one. So as I said, this was a birthday start, so I started this August 26th and that's my start. This is on a 32 count terracotta even weave from Swigart and I think this is going to be perfect for the chart. So this will be a small um, shadow lane, but I... I miscounted a little bit and cut the fabric very tight. So there will be like an inch margin on each side, which is not ideal, but it will fit on there at least. So I have a few of the colors in there. I have a few of the crinics in there already. And yeah, I cannot wait as with, don't you say with all your projects, but this is also a very, very, Beautiful one. I like to stitch and it will be in my 12 by 12. Oh, and this is in the very first Rhino Front project bag that I made. I have it quilted on the back and it's a little bit wonky because I used a plastic tablecloth for the vinyl, which was not the best idea because it's really flimsy. But yeah, all the floss in there, it does the job. And now the last one from the first batch before I uh, change 
uh, out um, my tower of whips over there. This was started on August 31st. It is called September by the Cricut Collection. So I saw this series for the first time on Jessie Marie Dustaff's um, channel and I think she was showing the October one. And I decided to start with three months for now. It's September, no, four. September, December, April and August because those are months that have special meaning to me. And I have December done um, and September is a start as it. Okay, I... This is what I have. Let's show you first. This is where I am. I am stitching this on a 32 count marbled hazelnut linen by XJU Designs. Which is, it's gorgeous, it's super soft, the modeling is amazing. I'm stitching it with all of the called for threads. Um, the letters are in a silk and the rest are in the called for DMC. And yeah, I like that it's, it's not too, that it blends a little bit in the fabric. I don't, I really like it, I don't, I don't mind that at all. And yeah. That's, that's what I have so far um, on my September piece and now let's get on to the next six whips. Okay, so while I was putting together the next pile of whips over there, I found one more project that will be a UF, uh, UFO going forward, but it was still in my whip pile and it is unfortunately Ode to Autumn by Tiny Modernist. So this is nothing to do with that pattern. I might restart it one day once I'm yeah, uh, motivated to do so again. And um, also I think she's working on like a um, similar winter one right now. So maybe once that one comes out. But the thing with that one, this one has been living in this gorgeous project bag that will be reallocated now. That was the progress I had made. And yeah, the thing is with this one, I got it into my head to do a whole conversion to over diets for this one before I really knew anything about over that thread. So, yeah, it glares a little bit, but you can see all of the thread in there. And basically I just went online to a conversion and put in the DMC that was called for and picked um, one of either Weak Style Works, Classic Color Works or Gentle Arts. I was stitching this on a 32 count linen by Swigert in Blue Spruce. And the thing is with the over the dyes and the linen, it's just, I think it's too sparse, so you cannot really see it on camera, but I don't like the coverage of all of the colors. I don't like some of the colors I picked for an over dye, for example, that weird, weird neony skin color over here. And yeah. So I have not wanted to pick this up the whole autumn after I started it. This will go into my UFO pile, the threads will go into my stash and maybe I will restart it one day. We will see. Okay, but back to whips now. So the next project I started for Sample of September and for Back to School Sol hosted by Lauren, the New Hampshire stitcher. And I chose a BAP, a big ass project that really fits the bill because I'm doing Dutch beauty, which is humongous. So I uh, started this one, but with the call for DMC, but immediately knew it was too dull, too muted, too light for my taste. And I did my own color conversion to DMC this time. I just uh, picked more vibrant colors, but in the same realm, realm, how do you pronounce that? 
than the original ones. And oh, let's get it over here. This is my progress. I'm not showing you the whole blanket of fabric that this is. I think it's a whole yard on 40 count. And I started in the middle of the deer and you can already see if you know that pattern that it's just more colorful. And sometime when I was stitching it, I was doubting my decisions for colors, but I'm just going with it. And the more I look at it, the more I like it. This is 40 count marble bunny linen by XJU Design. And as I said, it's my own DMC conversion. If you are interested in the colors I'm using, please just let me know and I'm happy to share them with you. Oh, sorry. This is the DMCs that I'm using. There's only like 12 colors in this. And yeah, can't put it there. I started in September, in September over here, and then picked it up in again in November and finished the first page and did this little bit. This will be my twelve by twelve today and tomorrow, so I'm happy to, to stitch on this one again. I really like to stitch on forty count. I found, and uh, yeah, it will still take me forever <laughs> to do this but yeah I love it it's a very very nice project next up is no it's not my one and only full coverage but uh, yeah well it's a full coverage <laughs> let's put it that way and it's called painted hippo by mommy's hobbies design so this is a chart that I'm stitching for my husband. So I started it September 4th, which is our wedding, wedding anniversary. And I had been looking around for a hippo pattern or all over the place. I didn't find any that I liked. I didn't want to do like a more realistic one. I wanted to do a more of a painted one. And uh, then I reached out to her and she kindly charted this for me and made this for me. And it's available in your shop as well. So, yeah, um, I have this one on a scroll frame ugh, that I got yesterday, actually, because I wanted to try one and I think I like it. And so I've been stitching on this yesterday. This is on a 28 count even width um, easy grid and I'm doing this 2 over 1 10 stitch and I ah, love it. I love it for full coverage. Um, this is where I am. Also going to show you my back on this one because I find it interesting. So it 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 the black of course it's it, it's very nice. This is a little bit of a mess, but oh well, not too bad. I am stitching this basically cross country page wise. I would say starting with all the black on each page. My plan is to do one page a month on this one so that it will be finished by our fourth wedding anniversary. Um, yeah, I have been keeping up so far and then December came with all my new starts and from December page I have only this little bit but it's fine. It's fine. I will continue in January with this. There's a ton of black stitching with this, but yeah, I don't mind it. It's it's nice, it's easy to do. And I'm at right around 19% on that one. And how cute is the ears coming out there? Yeah. And I've also been really liking the, the scroll frame for this and it will stay on there for a bit, I think. I, oh, and for that one, I made a project bag. I made that project bag with this super cute lumberjack uh, fabric because my old husband is also a hobby lumberjack. And as I'm filming this right now, he's actually in the woods chopping, chopping down some trees or something, whatever he's doing there. <laughs> oh, and um, not the super is cute, but and on the inside there's wood fabric as well. It's a really, really cute project bag. 
I think. Okay, next up is a pattern called Autumn Meditation by Carolyn Manning. This was in a Just Cross Stitch magazine. And uh, I started this September 19th after we came home from our vacation and I was just in the mood for a new start. This is in this gorgeous project bag that I made with this kaleidoscopic pattern and um, yeah that's the front. This I am stitching with all the called for over dies and on a 32 count linen from Nicholas Fremel design from the little sampler collection so it doesn't have a specific name it's just from that collection and this is a smaller uh, stitch so this is the middle right here and this is one corner so technically something is um, like clunking I think it's my needle minder let's hold that for a bit and technically I guess I could have finished that in uh, autumn but there are so many color changes on this with all the tiny leaves and stuff and the linen is quite thin and see-through it's lovely to stitch with it's like butter but you cannot really travel with your um with your threads on this so it's a lot of starting and stopping and starting and stopping so it takes a while but i think this is going to be gorgeous i am sure that this will be done um next year so that it can be up for autumn next year Okay, then we have a pattern called Athena by Carolyn Manning. It's one of her full coverage, what are the, is it stained glass? No, it's one of her, it, I have a picture up there anyways, um, typical styles. And um, this is one that immediately spoke to me color wise. And I started this one October 2nd while I was in Greece, so fitting <laughs> for the name. And I have this in my in the my very first project bag that I made, which is a little bit flimsy, but um yeah, it's it's usable. And this is actually a fabric that is was left over from a summer dress that I made. So yeah, that's the project bag. And that's my progress this is about six percent this is stitched on a 14 count uh, ada in a linen color from dmc and the weird thing thing with this is i usually really really don't like stitching on ada but this one is fine it's somehow a little bit different it's not too um too like stiff but also since it's 14 count it the, it has super nice big holes they but they don't show since it's uh full coverage so yeah i'm doing it with all the called for um dmc and yeah and it, it also has a super fancy cute whatever needle minder that i made myself that i think fit Color-wise and theme-wise and yeah, this is, this was Athena. Next up, and we're already in November by now. Next up is one, I mean I like all of them, but this one I'm still super super excited about. This is a pattern I found in the Gift of Stitching magazine and until that date I was um, sure that I didn't like stitching alphabets and I didn't look, like the look of it and this one was the one that changed everything I think. It is called Lettre Karma by Reflet de Soie. I hope I'm not butchering that pronunciation too much. And yeah, I'm stitching this uh, with Katie the Peacock Stitcher. We stitched we are doing basically a sal for this. It's crimson letters sal, so lettre karma in English. 
And um, yeah, I'm stitching it with the red that the title um, calls them, but she's doing it in blues and oh, it's very pretty as well. So yeah, you probably want to see now. Um, please don't be too distracted by my super sweet needle miner. I mean, how cute is this? This one I made as well. And, but I will cover it so that it won't distract from the pattern too much. This is uh, my progress. So I started this November 1st and I'm doing it uh, on the 46 count, my very first time uh, um, stitching on 46 count and I'm in love. Oh, I think it's it's just a, it's it's just the right um, count for doing one over two for me. This is uh, in the colorway seashell from XJU Designs, and I'm stitching this in two uh, reds from Anchor. So if you want to know the specific um, types of red, please let me know. But it's just one that's a little bit. Um, lighter and one that's a little bit darker and that's the whole uh, width of the pattern already and yeah it's going to be stunning once it's done it's just stunning and now I really do love stitching alphabets this one still not, needs a nice project back and last um, pattern for that um, pile and also this is the last pattern before we get on to my December starts. So if you have uh, seen all my Stitchy Advent videos um, you will know all of the ones that um, I will show but there is some progress on that so maybe it's still interesting to you. Or maybe you're just stitching and I'm rambling around, uh, about in the in the background, which is super <laughs> fine as well. Okay, so next up, this I started November third. Um, this is Christmas Parade by Cottage Garden Samplings. This is one I saw on Instagram. Immediately ordered when it was available. It came like three days later, which was really quick, and started the same day because I loved it so much. I have seen a few people already finishing this. Uh, Alex um, has finished this and changed it around a little bit. And I think, um, okay, I, I'm sorry, is it Brenda or Brandy for, from B&E Stitchery has finished this as well. I'm sorry that I don't remember your name right now. Please excuse me for that. But getting back to the chart, this is in this project bag that I made is a December wintery one, super sweet, with a little bit of fabric stacking down there and the blue fabric inside as well. And this is my progress. So I'm still stuck in Santa's belly, <laughs> basically. I mean, he's huge. I'm doing this with all the cold for DMC on a 32 count vintage gray, even weaved by Zweigert. And I think that color is called Vintage Stormy Night in the US. And that was the perfect choice for me so that the white is still um, visible. And yeah, this one will probably not get touched in a while, but maybe in July for Christmas in July. But I think once Santa is done, the rest will go uh, pretty quickly. And it only got put um, on, on the side because of my Stitchy Advent all new starts in December. So not because it's not nice. Okay, that was the next pile of whips. I will put those away and uh, arrange the next six. And these will be my December starts. Okay, now on to my December new starts and technically there were 24 new starts in December for me but some of the project as, projects I have already finished. So these are the whips that are left over from December. On December 1st I... Oh, and if you haven't watched my Stitchy Advent, I had 
Twenty starts in um, some generic drawstring bags, and uh, my husband randomized which ones I would get each day. On um, and on each Sunday, I had a bigger new start that was planned, and a lot of them were stitch alongs as well. Okay, so December first, I started needles and pins by Helga Mandel. Um, uh, a uh, design that was in the Gift of Stitching magazine and this one <laughs> this one is small I didn't have a lot of time for this that day because I really wanted to finish another project and then there was also the jingle ball going on so I only got a little bit in but it's a start and I'm doing this on a 32 count uh, linen from Nicolas Flamel design, which is again from the little sampler collection and it's a, like a dusty old pink. And I'm doing this with the calls for DMC and the words I am doing in pomegranate, which I just had in my stash from the Temple Art. So, okay. Next, December 2nd, was a day I spent mostly at the Jingle Ball, which was amazing, but it's not the topic we're talking about today. December 2nd, I started the winter one from Quaker Seasonals. It is also from the Gift of Stitching magazine and I could not find out who the designer was and I think it was the person who did the Gift of Stitching magazine. This is also not available anywhere else, but you can get the back issues of that magazine if you want to do so. And I can really recommend it because there is a lot of amazingness in there. So I am doing all four of them. In, and each one for each one I picked a Dinky Dice silk. And it is again on a Nicolas Flamel design um, linen. I get I really like to get those because she's from Hungary so they reach me quite quickly and I don't have to pay any taxes and stuff so yeah they're convenient for me and they're gorgeous and lovely to stitch on as well. But let's get <laughs> finally get onto my stitch and I feel like I have to do it this way. Nah, let's just, you don't have to see me right? So this is uh, what I have. I had a lot of time to stitch this that day because as I said, I was at the Jingle Ball. And I picked this lovely uh, Dinky Dye Silk. Uh, it's called Out of the Blue. And since it's 40 count, I'm doing one over two and it's variegated and just so dainty and lovely. Yeah, really, really beautiful winter stitch. And then it was December 3rd, which was a Sunday, and so I started a bigger project. And this is a stitch along I am doing with Caitlin from Cross Stitch Kate here on YouTube. And it, the chart we're doing is Caroline Amelia Troll by With Thy Needle. I'm not going to say her, her Brenda, ah, I cannot pronounce it. So you know who, who, whom I mean. And yeah, I was really looking forward to starting this with Caitlin because I'm a big her fan of her floss tube and her videos. And um, yeah, so we started this. I had a little bit of trouble deciding on a fabric. But before we get into that, I want to show you the project bag I made for me and Caitlin. It's this gorgeous, gorgeous a flowery background. And then that's the front there with a beautiful zipper, the, the chart in there, and I'm stitching it with all of the cold for its um, over dyes and uh, some DMC. And this is my fabric and my start. So this is 32 count vintage rose and even weave by Swigart. And um, it's very busy, it's a very busy printed fabric, but I think 
it goes really well. All the colors I have show up really well, which was uh, a struggle I had with that ch uh, chart. So yeah, I got a little bit of border done and a lot of that uh, huge tree. And this one will be in my 12 by 12 as well this weekend. So I'm really looking forward to stitching a little bit more in that. And there's also a cute button needle miner I made for Caitlin and myself. And yeah, I think that's all I have to say on that one. Next up, December 5th, because apparently I already finished what I started December 4th. <laughs> um, if you want to see my December finishes, all of them are in my in my last uh, four videos. December 5th, I started Four Seasons by a Prairie Schooler, again from the Gift of Stitching magazine. I have a lot of uh, magazine charts in my December starts. I um, will be doing all four seasons, but not as uh, you see on the picture in like a square, but in a row. And I wanted to start with winter because it's what, yeah, it was snowing that day and I didn't want to start with spring. But so I just started on the right side of my fabric. And I just have a, a little start on this. This is with all the calls for DMC on a 32 count vintage gray, again, vintage stormy night in the US, even with uh, by Swigert. And yeah, they're tiny. So that's basically the height of them. And I think they're going to be super, super cute. There's the little snow and peeking there. I really want to finish at least the winter pattern as long as it's winter here. I think it's doable. It's, it's not too much. Do this. On December 6th, I started Have a Cozy Holiday by Free Tiny Owls, which was in the Just Cross Stitch magazine uh, December 2023. So the, uh, as I'm filming this, the current issue. And I already, already talked about uh, to you about this in my Stitchy Advent video, but yeah, this one is a little bit of a bummer because look at that cute fox. He's so sweet, but there are so many fractional stitches in that tiny chart and I really hate that fabric. I have done one um, pattern before on this and it's so hard to stitch and to get your needle through. So I will not be finishing this. I, also, I miscounted somewhere and I will just keep him as it as he is, maybe uh, let him peek out of a, a greeting card someday. And so basically that's a finish or a UFO, but also it's still in a whip pile because I'm not, I haven't decided 1000% that he's done now. What would you do? What would you do? For now he's on the back burner at least. <laughs> oh, and the fabric I really don't like is 32 count white opalescent Lugana by Swigert. I like other uh, opalescents. This one, this one, I would never stitch anything on that one again. And the last uh, one of my first batch of December starts is called Honey Love by Cherry Hill Stitchery. It was in the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. And after the hassle of stitching from the day before. This one was just, oh, it was so lovely to stitch on. Um, this is what I have. It's so cute. I mean, the outlines of the, the flowers look a little bit weird, but it's super cute. And it's in, on a 36 count light yellow linen from Swigert. I don't know the official name. And it's like, it's like an actual color, I would say. I'm using all the cards for called for DMC and yeah it was super super lovely to stitch I really like to stitch on this and cannot wait to get it back out again doing two over two on the 36 count because that's just what I prefer okay how much more we have? 12 more. So we have 12 more whips. Let me get the next six prepared and I will be right back. Next up, 
December 10th was another Sunday and another stitch along that I did. I um, am doing this with cross stitch Sarah and um, the stitch along we're doing is Wintertown Sal. So if you have this pattern and want to join in, you're very welcome. The pattern I'm talking about is Wintertown Sampler by Jenny van der Wiele out of a just, not just cross stitch, cross stitcher magazine. And I saw this and I immediately knew I had to stitch it because it's super, super cute. I have this in a Mimet project bag. It's so pretty. The birds and and I have a little bit of lace here and uh, what do I have on the inside? That fabric. Yeah, very cute uh, project bag. And this is my progress. It's a small progress. I didn't have that much time that day. It was a Sunday so I was filming my floss tube that day and also I don't know probably baking look at my needle minder isn't it sweet it's very glary but super sweet so I started in the top middle of this poinsett poinsettia and I'm stitching this with uh, DMC it's not all of the called for because I sapped out some of the colors I didn't have but they're very similar to what uh, what is called and I'm stitching this on this fantastic um, fabric it says 36 count marble steel by extra UT signs and it's an opalescent and other than the, the really really nasty white one this is super fine to stitch on so I have no idea what's the deal there but I'm glad and yeah I love this I love this I will definitely stitch on this some more this winter because it's not only Christmas see in my in my eyes and this will also be in my 12 by 12 then December 12th because December 11th I apparently had another finish um, is a kit from Dimensions and this is called Woodland Cheer. It's one of their new releases from this season. I got this as soon as I saw it because it's super super cute and I wanted to stitch it. But all of the white dots in the background are French knots and I am not. I'm not doing that. And also it, in the kit there it was a really stiff, I think 18 count beige Ada. And I don't like Ada, with a few exceptions, but not for that one. So this is what I have. I picked out uh, this, um, uh, it's, it's a linen with those um, printed tiny dots on there. So those are going to work uh, as my French knots basically. And I'm stitching this with all the threads that are in the kit. There are a lot of blends in there. All the green from the tree are blends, which is lovely. There will be a lot of backstitching. This will probably get done next year for the season. Maybe in July as well, some stitching on this. There are the antlers coming in <laughs> of the reindeer. So yeah, this is, this, is, this is a nice stitch. This is nice. Next up is a pattern from Tiny Modernist. This I started December 13th and it is called Cabin in the Woods and it was in a magazine but she has it on her site now as well so you can purchase it from her. And this one, I on that day I came home really late and I didn't really have any time to stitch. So that's it. I don't even know what's the right, what's the, um, the way this goes, I think like that. Can you even tell? Yeah, so just one strand of white in there. This I will stitch with all the cult for DMC and the fabric is 32 count vintage blue linen from Zweigart. Yeah, I have a huge piece there and this will just be a little bit in the corner. It's a pity that it's so, such a little start because I love that pattern but it is what it is. I didn't have any time that day. It's a start. So that's good. Then December 14th, I had a little bit more time again. 
This is called Be Kind by Beth Paterini and it is out of an old Just Cross Stitch magazine. I got a lot of back issues uh, on DVD and uh, yeah, I love looking through the old patterns and this is one I really liked and immediately wanted to start. So this one, I uh, did a little bit of a color conversion on that one. Let me show you what I have. This is on um, a 40 count Valor by Picture This Plus. And I really like stitching on this probably because uh, Picture This Plus is um, known uh, for shrinking up their uh, fabrics a little bit while dyeing. So this is prob probably going closer to a 46 count. So maybe that's why I really liked it as well. I love the modeling on that fabric. And I picked out the colors Loosely based on the pattern, but also what looked nice on that fabric. So yeah, I have a bunch of DMCs and for the gorgeous variegated um, birds, I am using Classic Colorworks Bejeweled. Yeah. So that's that one that I hope to finish around Valentine's. Maybe. Yeah, would be fitting. Then December 16th, which is also my mother's birthday and my mom has just started watching those videos. <laughs> and so that day I started the black and white sampler by Marie Barber. Again, from an old Just Cross Stitch magazine um, issue. If you want to know any issues, I don't write them down, but I can look them up for you if you want. So this one is in that project bag. It's in the back. It's an it's an upholstery fabric, and it's super soft. And I love how it looks with the shadows and stuff. And that's the front. Um, and uh, I have a little bit of a start. I didn't have too much time that day to stitch. Just a little bit in the evening because I was really busy sewing my Christmas dress. But that is what I have so far. This is on a 36 count stone linen by Fiber on a Whim. Again, two over two because I started trying one over two, but no, I didn't like it. I like, I like it if you can really see what I stitch. And the thread I'm using for this is an over dyed. It's Black Crow by the Chantel Art. It's not really variegated, so I could probably have gotten away with three seven nine nine, but it's only two strands, as I also said in the video. I showed this the first time, so yeah, not not too worried about that. And then the last um, pattern from this uh, pile is a restart. This one is Christmas Quaker by Daily Pattern Post on Etsy. I started this sometime in summer, then realized when I got quite a bit done, I can show you, that's all I had, um, then that I started in the wrong spot and Christmas would not be able to fit on there, it would have only been Christmas, which, yeah. Which you cannot have, of course, so I was devastated about the idea to frog all this, but I had enough fabric left over to just restart, which I did, and I used the leftovers that I cut off of this for some ornaments that I have already finished. And I restarted this December 17th with just a little bit of a start. I didn't have that much time that day. So I picked my own um, colors for this and I'm going to use that piece to show you. I have, um, what do I have? Let me get my cheat sheet there. So I have DMC 319, which is that green. I have Classic Colorworks Steamed Broccoli, which is the light green. I have Weeks Merlot, which is the dark red. Weeks Louisiana Hot Sauce with the lighter red. I started with Weeks White Wash for 
the white, but I will ch just change it to 3865 for the next um, go around. And I have a Petit Treasure Braid PH01 for the gold. And I took the um, um, pattern image and put it on my iPad and just colored in um, colors what I wanted to do. Whereas all the hearts are basically red, all the snowflakes are white, and then the other things are just, yeah, what made sense for me. And that one is in a super cute me made project bag again with Christmas trees in the back and very Christmassy and pretty on the front. Yeah, and the fabric I'm stitching this on is 32 count opalescent natural by Swigert. Again, an opalescent that's lovely to stitch on, fortunately. Okay, we only have six more whips to go through. So I will grab these, uh, these. So I will grab them now and be right back. And just like that, we are down to my last six whips. So let's get on with them so that this video won't be three hours long. <laughs> On December 18th, I started my very first Barbara Anna. It is called Christmas Window. And this is what I have. I have no boards for the small ones, but and now I'm regretting it because this is a very soft linen. It is uh, on 36 count Ocean Air by Fox and Rabbit. Again, two over two. And I'm stitching it with all of the call for DMC and I have, as you can see, started on that windows frame and it's lovely. This is going to be a super nice Christmas piece. Once it's done, it's also not too big. Then on December 19th, I started another seasonal series. This, the one I'm start, I am started with is called Spring Hair Etching by Hard in Hand Needle Art. And there's also matching um, pieces for all of the other seasons, but I started with spring this time. And yeah, I have this out of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine, as well as the previous one, the Christmas window. These um, um, seasonal um, series was in all of the 2020 issues. So this is what I have. Isn't he handsome? I'm stitching this on a no-name linen band in like a cream color and it, it comes out to about a 28 count. It's a little bit stiff, but nice to stitch on, and I just bought it in a store here in Austria. I am doing this with a bunch of overdyes. These are the colors for all four seasons. So there's one um, classic color work, Sticks and Twigs, that will be in all four um, pieces. And then there is other accent colors that I just grabbed from Stash. And the one I'm using for the spring, whoops, sorry for that, spring flowers is Valdani Old Rose, which is this one. Yeah, I want to do all four seasons in a row going down on one piece of fabric. And I have the supplies for all four in this cute um, strawberries and yellow butterflies springy project bag. Yellow dots on the inside that I made. Okay, then on December 20th I started another stunning piece. This is called Austrian One by Bleu de Chine. It was in a Just Cross Stitch magazine, an old one again. And uh, yeah, I really liked the name, um, it's Austrian inspired and so I just had to start it. It's also one of my husband's favorites. I'm doing this on a 32 count vintage dune linen by Swigert and I'm using DMC 115. 
So it's a gorgeous combination and I'm just stitching it with however um, the thread comes out of the skein. I'm not doing any fussy cutting or anything. And that's my start from that day. I love the variegation. A lot of people uh, really like that color from DMC and I do as well. And I think this is going to be super, super nice and stunning once it's done. Then December 21st, finally, I was able to start one of my Christmas days by Hello from Liz Matthews. One day I want to do all of them, but you have to start somewhere, right? I want to put all of them in this Christmassy bag with Christmas houses on the back and uh, this one on the outside and on the inside it's the screen. I am stitching all of them on the same fabric, but I cut up the fabric because I don't want to wrangle a piece this large and what if I don't want to do all 12 of them in the end. I'm planning to do so, but who knows? So I'm doing them individually and then I can display them once one is done and then we will see how I finish them when all of them are done. So this is the first day of Christmas. And uh, this one is on 36 count natural white linen from Swigert, as all the other ones will be, as I said. And this is what I got done, done December 21st, quite a bit. Uh, the border and one pair. Was a lovely needle miner of mine on there. So, yeah. And then on December 23rd, so two, day, two days later, I started the second day of Christmas. Same fabric, 36 count natural white linen. Little less progress because one day before Christmas. Yeah. So that's that one. I am using all of the called, called for DMC for this, but I will be changing out some of the free tan stitching in the background because I don't want to have black stars and snowflakes, I think. But this will be a decision that's, that will be made on a later date. <laughs> Is that right? Okay. And last but not least, my newest whip. My joy, no. I'm, I'm overacting again, but this was my Christmas Eve start. It's a stitch along with Shiloh from XStitch MD. I don't think she has started it yet though. Maybe she has, but I haven't seen her posting about it yet. We decided, I saw this on her channel and asked her if she wanted to do a stitch along with me and she said yes, and we are doing the Biedermeier Sampler 1864 by GGR. And this one is one of those where the picture just doesn't do it justice at all. I fell in love with it anyway. And this is one piece that was really inspired by my Lettre Carme and the alphabet thing um, going on again. And it's so special that of course I had to make a project bag for it. Um, it's this one, yeah, with this like vintage inspired images on the back, and yeah, it's vinyl front, and again, there's the there's the pattern in there. And for this one, um, I I don't think I told you the hashtag, right? It's hashtag #BeTheMayaSal if you want to join in. And for this one, I really like the pattern, but I didn't like the colors on there. They just don't fit my style and my home. So I made my own color conversion. The fabric I'm using is 40 count vintage country mocha linen by Swigert. So a fan favorite. And the colors I'm using, there's my needle minder stuck on there. Ugh. Are my, I picked, just picked them from Stash and now uh, yeah. I have 10 shades of blue and 10 shades of beiges and browns that I will combine together with the Vintage Country Mocha. And this is my progress. Oh, 
I am just picking a color that I like and going with it for one alphabet, one row. And I um, yeah, stitched down to the, this alphabet here and I think I'm now going to finish the whole width with that color so that I can remember what I used. And yeah, I love how these flowers turned out, the colors I used for those, the dark blue, everything about it so far is really, really gorgeous. It's lovely to stitch with and it's so funny because there, <laughs> there are just some letters missing in the alphabets. So yeah, there a lot of times there's like the I or the J missing, which is quite common, I think. But there's one where it's just the X missing or the Y and... Yeah, just how she was able to to fit them on the on the on the fabric she had, I guess, uh, since it's a reproduction. <laughs> but it's it, it yeah, it's fun to stitch, and I like the forty count. I like just picking my colors and seeing how this is going to turn out, and it's it's amazing. I stitched, I think. This was three days of stitching, not the whole day, but in three days. So 24th, 25th and 26th I stitched on that one. And that's it. I mean, it's 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 a grand finale, I think, for for my whip pile. Um, but this is all my whips. 30 in total. And uh, yeah, we will see how many I will have at the end of next year. Or at the, in June next year, maybe I will do a mid-year whip parade. I love watching those too. But I don't want to drag this out too long. Outros and stuff. So thank you so, so much if you stuck around, if you watched my whip parade. I know there are a lot of whip parades going around right now. I have some plans already figured out for next year. But I will, as I... Um, put back all of the whips I have. I will look at them again, maybe make some plans and probably later today film my plans video for 2024 and also throw in some finishes in there if I can find them. If not, it will only be plans. But yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this Floss Tube Extra and I hope you have a wonderful New Year's Eve and a good start to 2024. Bye!